Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Chase Chicos, strength and conditioning coach for Marvin Vittori. And I am Matteo Capodaglio, his performance nutritionist. And today, we wanted to talk with you guys about how a professional UFC fighter can make weight twice in one month and still perform at his peak. So first and foremost, I wanted to ask Matteo, why is this even a topic of conversation? And this is a very good question. Most athletes are scared by the process of making weight through these extreme and potentially harmful weight cuts. The idea that we have is slightly different. We like to talk about weight management, but that happens just if you have an approach that is 52 weeks a year. Absolutely, even from a, a strength and conditioning perspective. And you know, some of our athletes probably uh, don't, aren't the biggest fans of this when, when, when we make them uh, do conditioning or, or Mateo's messaging them about nutrition and there's no fight scheduled. But I think it's absolutely necessary. Uh, these guys are full-time athletes. These guys are professional athletes at the highest level. And you know, if we get a, if we get a call to a fight in six weeks and now we have to worry about getting into shape, now we have to worry about cutting weight, and then we have to worry about what we're, what we're gonna do, who the opponent is, worry about the fight, so many variables there to worry about. When, if we're in shape, we stay in shape, our weight is within reach because we've been managing it, now we worry about fighting. We don't worry about all the other variables going on. And I think this is extremely important, and um, the, the, the way we approach, the, approach that game is just as that. Yeah, Chase, imagine if Dana calls you and he tells you you're gonna fight in three weeks and you don't know, you don't even know, you don't know the number, where your body fat is, how's your body composition at that moment, what are you gonna do? You're gonna drastically cut the calories in your diet and you're just gonna focus about stepping on that scale under the weight class limit and you're gonna forget about the most important thing of our work, which is performance performance on the night of the fight. So if we stay ready, we don't have to get ready. So as you may have seen from the hotel lobby incident, uh, Marvin was supposed to fight on May 13th. Marvin made the weight, the opponent missed the weight, opponent is pulled from the fight. A couple days later, Marvin gets a contract to fight the same exact guy, exactly 30 days from the original planned fight. What's going on in your head when you find out that Marvin has to make weight again 30 days later? I wasn't that worried. That's because we have numbers on our side. And I don't know if you recall, but five days before making weight, Marvin was still eating pasta. <laughs> and when I say pasta, as an Italian, I mean a big <laughs> A bowl big bowl, like a huge bowl pasta. of pasta, yes, I The remember. kind of bowl that will make your grandma proud. <laughs> a lot. Big bowl of pasta ragu, but no. Uh, to keep it serious, to keep it scientific, that translates on the fact that Marvin's resting metabolic rate was still high. Mm -hmm. It means that his hormonal profile was not altered. Those changes in resting metabolic rate and hormonal profile happens when you starve the body for a very long time. How do you know the resting metabolic rate of, of, the, of Marvin or of any of your athletes? Uh, we have full access to the UFC Performance Institute in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, it's a great place to bring everything down to numbers. So for example, with Marvin, at the beginning of each camp, we know we assess uh, body fat and lean mass through a DEXA scan, which is very precise. Uh, we also know through indirect calorimetry how much they're burning as they're resting, but we also know what kind of substrate they're burning as they're exercising on a treadmill, for example. Yeah, absolutely. From a physical performance aspect, it's been a, a the UFC PI and their staff has been an amazing resource for us. We're able to see, uh, you know, VO2 max. We're able to see power output. We're able to see asymmetries in the body, um, and you know things that may need work going into a camp or that we need to work on during an off camp so we see these physical capacities and we're able to formulate a plan nutrition and performance based around the data that we get from the UFC Performance Institute so their staff uh, has been a huge resource and awesome awesome they treat us well every time we come there 
Yeah, and just to give some insight to our audience, um, a lot of people to make weight, they cut carbs, mm -hmm. which is highly detrimental when it comes to performance. Uh, we did the opposite. We do the opposite with our athletes. We try to raise that carb quantities, cam by cam. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm pretty proud to say, again, to keep it Italian, that for this camp, uh, we could peak at around 6.57 grams of carbohydrates per kilo of body mass. And that is a lot. It's over... 2400 uh, calories 2400 calories of just carbs in a day and and to build a or to build a little bit off what Mateo said you know for us camp to camp we're trying to progress each camp so from a physical standpoint you know we get the assessments done just to make sure that we're headed in the right direction the the resting metabolic rate is headed in the right direction because overall we want to keep getting better we don't want to just get back to the performance that we had in the last fight. We want to be better than the last fight. So each camp, we're trying to build, we're trying to build, we're trying to build, we're trying to build. And that's how we're, that's how we're building champions. That's how we're going to build champions. Because we're going to keep making progress and we're going to keep assessing these things. We're going to keep formulating a plan using science and the information that we have from the last camp and in order to progress and optimize the performance of the athlete come fight night. Indeed numbers they never lie they sure don't and to wrap it up here are our takeaways on how to make weight twice in the ufc and still perform at the highest level proper planning prevents poor performance always have a plan in place if you fail to plan plan to fail the ufc is not an aesthetic competition it is a performance competition you just don't need to look good you need to be strong you need to be durable you need to be sharp as a professional athlete, this is a full-time job. You're not just a pro fighter for a couple months out of the year, you're a pro fighter for 365 days out of the year, treated as such. Well, Chase, I guess that's it for today. There's gonna be more of this. If you like it, subscribe to our channel. I'm Matteo Capodaglio, performance nutritionist. I'm Chase Chico's performance coach. Thank you for listening.